Welcome back to a new episode of Madman Review with Andrew, your host. Our interest today is in the Savage Model 99, a unique rifle that is missed dearly, but will probably not make a comeback in the near future. What makes this gun so unique is that it's a lever action rifle with a rotary magazine. Yes, it really exists, and it was well liked by whitetail hunters. It was in the early years of the last century that the whitetail population saw a steady increase in numbers. It was no surprise that deer hunting followed the same trend. In these days, it was the lever action rifle that ruled that sport. One of the most popular among these came from Winchester, the Model 94. Typically, it was used in 3030. While most hunters chose this rifle, the real guys, the ones that actually knew what they were doing, would rather pick the Savage Model 99. The reason is quite simple. Lever action rifles made by Winchester and Marlin came with one big downside, their two magazines. In those, the nose of the bullet rests against the bottom of the other one. With the recoil force involved, a pointy bullet might easily engage the primer of the next one, which in turn engages the primer in front of it, and so on. That would be a catastrophic chain reaction. In order to avoid this, a gun with a tube magazine can either shoot only two rounds, one in the mag and one in the chamber, or be loaded only with rounds that have bullets with blunt noses. This does limit the use of this gun with two rounds only or the choice of ammo for it if you want to load more than two rounds. Shooting bullets with a blunt nose, as everybody knows, brings a severe ballistic disadvantage. In order to avoid this, the Savage Model 99 used a rotary magazine. In it, the nose of the bullet does not rest anymore against the primer of the other round. Instead, they are arranged in a circle side by side. This gives a greater choice for ammo and a big ballistic advantage. At the same time, the rifle was so strong that it could handle smokeless powder rounds without a problem. Another advanced feature of the Model 99 was an internal hammer, a cocking indicator, and a round counter on the magazine. This made it way more sophisticated than its competitors. The whole concept even went a step further. When the 250 Savage was introduced as a cartridge for this rifle, in 1915 it really stood out of the crowd. At that time, bullets would probably be able to go faster than 2,000 feet per second. The 250 Savage managed to achieve 3,000 feet per second using an 87 grain bullet. Immediately, hunters saw the advantage of that round and this new cartridge. Savage did not stop there. Just five years later, it came out with the 300 Savage. This cartridge could even take on the 30 odd six. This made the Savage Model 99 the go to rifle for everyone who knew about guns and hunting. Bolt action rifles were at that time, neither before World War I nor shortly after, a big competitor in the hunting sport. However, as the war ended, they started to slowly gain ground. However, so far, the Savage Model 99 could still hold its own as the king of hunting rifles. The inventor of this outstanding rifle was born in Kingston, Jamaica on May 13, 1857. He studied in the U.S. and England, meant to become a bureaucrat. However, it was adventure that became his calling, so he went to Australia to gain some experience. There, he was even captured and held captive for one year by Aborigines. It is claimed that a ransom was demanded but refused by his family. After exploring the interior of Australia, he managed to own the largest cattle ranch on this vast continent. After marrying Anne Brynant, with whom he could have four daughters and four sons, he left Australia 11 years after his arrival and went back to Jamaica to grow coffee. Savage loved weapons as well as machines, so it is no surprise that he started tinkering on some new ideas. After improving the service rifle of the British Army, he even invented a torpedo which was bought by the Brazilian government. He even developed rifles with detachable magazines and recoilless rifles. Working on his projects, it soon became clear to him that he would have a better future in the U.S., so he left Jamaica for New York. There, he became the manager of the Utica Belt Line Railroad. This did not deter him from his tinkering. One of his new projects was a hammerless rifle with a lever action that he patented in 1893. His ideas brought him a few investors, and in 1894, he went on to found Savage Arms. The market was pretty much dominated by Remington, Colt, and Winchester, but these were times when the newly invented smokeless powder appeared. Savage saw the old big bore rifle cartridges with their low pressure were on the brink of being obsolete. Europe has turned its attention already to this new powder, and even the American Army being using it in 1892 with the adoption of the 3040 Craig. Savage even tried to compete with the Craig using his design for the Model 1892. While he failed on that, he continued his work and developed the Model 1892 into the Model 1895. With this, he was more successful and managed to get a contract from the New York National Guard. However, politics did their bid and the contract was cancelled. Still, Savage managed to get some success. He introduced the 3 3 Savage bottlenecked cartridge for smokeless powder and with pointed bullets. However, it had to compete with larger cartridges like the 4570 at that time. 
The thinking was that bigger is better, so hunters would go for the brute force big cartridges instead of the more efficient but physically smaller ones like the 303 Savage. On the flip side, Savage understood marketing and run testimonials of the effectiveness of his cartridge. The catalogs of this time would be more than just a display of products. In the era before the invention of the TV or internet, they also served as a source of information. With some convincing first-person accounts of moose, deer, and sheep being killed with one shot, using his cartridge was a game changer. The real clincher was the story of a resident of Alaska who even dispatched a whale with only one shot using the 303 Savage. Besides marketing, Savage continued to work on his rifle, and the Model 1895 evolved into what became the Model 1899. Produced from 1899 until 1998, it became one of the most successful hunting rifles ever made. Until 1960 alone, one million of them were made. Most of the development actually happened on machinery of the Remington factory, and Remington was offered this design. At that time, Winchester and Remington were owned by the same parent company that wanted to avoid competition for Winchester and blocked the production of lever-action rifles by Remington. For that reason, Remington went into the semi-auto and pump-action market. In 1904, Savage was drawn to new adventures, so he sold his stake in the company and he went to California. Savage Arms continued without him and flourished into the largest firearms company in the free world. Also, it did not just stop with what it had. It developed the model 1899, later 99, into a great variety of models, makes. There are entire books trying to recount all or part of them. There were variants with barrel lengths of more than 20 inches, carbines, octagon, and half octagon barrels. One even had a 410 shotgun barrel. From 1950 on, there were also variants that were drilled and tapped for scopes to be mounted. Brass was discarded for steel, the round counter for the magazine removed, and there were even some with a detachable magazine. The main design is hammerless, with a lock time that is much faster than traditional lever-action rifles. A long, wide, and curved piece of metal is used to connect the breech bolt to the lever. This creates a distinctive profile, which you can see when you open the action. When you close the lever, the breech block is locked right into the action. This allows it to withstand better the higher-pressure cartridges that were available with smokeless powder. The round feed is controlled. This means when the cartridge comes out of the magazine, it is captured by the extractor, who then holds it right in place against the bolt face. A pin serves as a cocking indicator and sticks out on top as soon as the gun is cocked. The stock of the Savage Model 99 consists of two pieces. There are the forehand and the butt stock. What makes it especially easy to carry is the bottom of the action, which consists of metal and is rounded. On the right side of the lever is the safety in form of a small catch. Push it forward and it's engaged. The lever is shut and the rifle cannot fire. Pull it back and you can fire. This is quite the opposite to most other modern rifles. There, back means it is safe and forward means it can fire. Keep that in mind and handle it the right way. Later, some models sported a top tang safety like a shotgun, but this did not prove so popular. The Model 99 could be had in many chamberings. One of them was the 303 Savage. Soon the 22 Savage high power followed, based on the 2535 Winchester and designed by Charles Newton. It was introduced in the Model 99 in 1912. It brought a 70 grain bullet to the table and reached muzzle velocities of 2,800 feet per second. For this performance, it was marketed as being for big games. Some even believed in the marketing testimonials and were probably less than impressed with the actual performance. This led to the cartridge falling out of favor, at least when it comes to big game hunting. The next cartridge for this rifle was the 253,000, or today just the 250. Designed by Charles Noon to be used with 100 grain bullet, marketing got its way and reduced this weight to 87 grain. The reason was simple. A lighter bullet could be propelled faster, reaching 3,000 feet per second. With this number in the name, the cartridge could easily be sold. However, this reduction in bullet weight for more speed brought some erratic terminal performance with it. This had to be corrected by switching back to the designed 100 grain bullets, even if this happened after the designer passed away. Next, the 300 Savage made its debut. This happened in 1920, right after World War I. In this great war, the soldiers had seen the 30-06 at work, and it had impressed them. Savage had to come up with something similar, as the Model 99 could not use this cartridge. They shortened its case, designed a short neck as well as a sharp shoulder, and created enough space to put enough powder in it. That resulted in a 150-grain bullet being shot at a muzzle velocity of 2,700 feet per second. At that time, this was enough to compete with the 30-06, only later was the velocity of the 30 6 increased to 2,900 feet per second. Soon, the 300 Savage became very popular, leading to other gun manufacturers offering rifles in this Savage caliber. This event led to the military having a look at it and modifying it into what became the 762 NATO, with the sports world equivalent of the 308 Winchester. This brought about the development that the 308 practically killed the 300 Savage. 
The former was soon outselling the latter, and that even in its very own rifle, the Model 99. There has been a lot of other chamberings for this great gun, but those are the most important ones. After the production of the Model 99 ran out, Savage had some hard times until it was taken over by Ron Colburn, who dropped every product except for one, the Model 110. What looked like a crazy move was the rescue of the company. Today, Savage is up and about and still building very good guns. This led to the big question being asked, will the Model 99 ever be produced again? This was denied by Ron Colburn, pointing out at the production costs. Too many parts had to be hand-fitted. Nobody would be willing to pay the prices resulting for that. In short, there seems to be no market potential. However, thinking about expensive hand-fitted guns, another famous manufacturer came to mind with a line of snake guns that were deemed too costly to be produced and discontinued. Nowadays, the snakes have made their comeback. Modern technology and production techniques have made it possible to get these guns in a high quality without requiring labor-intensive and costly hand-fitting. They sell well for a high price, but in numbers that they are often sold out. There is no reason for Savage to follow that model. The cost can be brought down enough to bring this gun back on the market, where it again will conquer its share. It's just a question of will, as the technology and the example, is there already. Seeing that until today there are a lot of hunters and shooters who just love this gun, there is a customer base waiting ready to buy and order what the production capabilities can churn out. And if you like this video, consider giving us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to be notified of all future content as it becomes available. We'll see you next time.